Good evening. This is the late news on HKIBC. I'm Sarah Wong. Here are tonight's top stories. There's been a rush to apply for the Hong Kong Health Code, the first step for cross-border travel. Customs seizes $36 million worth of party drugs and vows a crackdown as the festive season nears. And a diplomatic setback for Taiwan as Nicaragua re-establishes ties with China. More than 136,000 people have applied for Hong Kong's health code after registration opened this morning. Those who are COVID-free will get the green code, which will enable them to go to the mainland when the border finally reopens. Johanna Cheng brings us the latest. Applications for Hong Kong's health code opened at 9 a.m., with 23,600 people registering in the first hour alone. The form has to be completed within 45 minutes. Applicants must enter their Hong Kong ID card number, their name in Chinese and English, and provide a valid phone number that can receive text messages. They must also provide an address, make a password for their account, and reconfirm all their data. Once completed, registrants should receive a confirmation message. Innovation and Technology Secretary Alfred Sitt said those living in public housing are not required to leave an address, while people without proof of address must wait for a confirmation with a PIN, which would arrive by mail in a week. Applicants will be given a red code if they are infected or are close contacts of confirmed cases, yellow if they visited a high-risk place, or green, which would enable them to cross the border. Once confirmed, the code can be synchronized with the Leave Home Safe app, meaning it will have access to a person's records from the previous 31 days. It can also sync up with Guangdong and Macau health codes for cross-border travel. Authorities have insisted records will not be automatically transferred to the mainland and Macau governments unless the person is infected or a close contact. There have been no announcements yet when the border will reopen, but preparations are being made for quarantine-free travel. Johanna Chan, HKIBC. A man who arrived from the United States is Hong Kong's fifth Omicron case, giving rise to speculation that the SAR will place the U.S. in the high-risk category. The 37-year-old patient who flew in from on Tuesday is asymptomatic. He had received two doses of the BioNTech vaccine. There were four other imported COVID cases today from Vietnam and Britain. All had been vaccinated at least once. Cathay Pacific, meanwhile, is temporarily relocating Boeing 777 pilots to Los Angeles next month. The trial scheme is expected to last four to five months. The plans were made after three pilots were diagnosed with COVID after returning to Hong Kong from Germany. There was some respite for Hong Kong's landfills last year as the amount of waste dropped to a seven-year low, partly due to a COVID-induced recession. But the pandemic created another problem. There was a jump in household waste, with face masks and disposable tableware contributing to the rise. Raymond Yuan tells us more. While face masks offer a basic layer of protection against COVID, the disposable coverings also create an environmental headache, as most of them end up in the bin. The COVID pandemic also changed dining habits, with more Hong Kongers opting for takeout meals to minimize public exposure. These practices generate a large amount of waste, and latest figures from the Environmental Protection Department put that into perspective. More than 6,800 tons of domestic waste was generated every day last year, a 4.4% rise year on year. But the increase was offset by a big drop in commercial and industrial waste, which fell 12% during the same period. Overall, the volume of municipal solid waste went down 2.2% to 10,809 tons per day with other types of waste also declining. Rubbish heading to the city's landfills in 2020 fell by 5.7% to a seven-year low, to almost 15,000 tons per day. But a breakdown of the waste by composition suggested Hong Kong still has a long way to go in its recycling efforts. Of all waste heading to landfills, 
Nearly half of the volume were paper and plastics, both easily recyclable materials. This was despite the amount of plastics recycled last year jumping by 32 percent. Ray Minyang, HKIBC. There will be free rides on most forms of public transport next Sunday when Hong Kong holds its first polls following the sweeping electoral revamp. MTR and light rail lines, except for the Airport Express, will offer free services on the day of the Legislative Council elections. Passengers will also not be charged for rides on KMB, New World First Bus and City Bus, except for airport, cross-border and overnight route. Trams too will be free, as the government expects more people to be out and about on polling day. The administration thanked transport operators for providing the free rides. The Customs Department has pledged to step up enforcement against party drugs as the festive season approaches. This comes after officers seized $36 million worth of ecstasy and cannabis in the past month. Johanna Chen has the details. On Monday, customs officers found 108 kilograms of cannabis buds hidden inside cereal boxes that arrived from Canada. They used X-rays to check after becoming suspicious about a container that arrived in Tingyi by sea. They found that 108 cereal boxes out of over 1,100 contained one kilogram of cannabis buds each. Officers then raided two industrial buildings in Chunwan and Chunmun and arrested two men. They also confiscated another 45 kilograms of cannabis spuds. The total haul of 153 kilograms was worth $33 million. In 10 other operations, officers seized 52,000 ecstasy pills and powdered ecstasy, worth $3 million. The drugs mainly arrived from Europe and were hidden in coffee and confectionery packets, in toys, bed sheets, cans and other items. Most addresses were incomplete or fake, and false documents were used to claim the parcels. One man was arrested in Mongkok yesterday. We believe there is an increasing trend due to the approaching uh, Christmas and New Year holidays. Um, thus, we believe the drug traffickers are making use of, the, of this uh, opportunity where parties and nightclubs would enable uh, people to gather. And thus, uh, these traffickers will take this opportunity to sell party drugs like cannabis and ecstasy tablets in these venues. Cannabis seized in the past five weeks alone accounted for 40 percent of the amount of the drug confiscated so far this year, while for ecstasy it was 30 percent. Johanna Chan, HKIBC. Police are investigating the killing of four girls in Ta Kuling. This afternoon, officers sealed off the road, leading to a farm which has hundreds of gold. A worker at the farm in Feng Wangwu village alerted police after finding three dead goats. The head of a fourth goat was also found, with the body missing. Police are treating the case as one of animal abuse. Earlier this week, 30 pigeons and a sparrow were found dead in Tai Po. It's suspected that they were poisoned. Police have arrested 11 people suspected of illegally gaining access to the e-wallet apps of at least 60 people. Syndicate members made cold calls and sent phishing messages to their victims pretending to be bank staff or family members. They would then get their passwords for the account, log in and transfer the money. The ring is believed to be connected to at least 60 cases involving $740,000. The alleged mastermind was among the nine men and two women arrested. One of them was charged with conspiracy to defraud. Beijing has denied offering commercial benefits to Nicaragua for cutting ties with Taiwan. The island now has relations with only 14 countries, with Honduras on the verge of jumping ship. There is only one China in the world. Nicaragua declared as it chose Beijing over Taipei. A delegation from the Central American country traveled to Tianjin to re-establish relations with China, with Vice Foreign Minister Ma Jiaoxu meeting Laureano Ortega Murillo, the son of Nicaraguan President Daniel Ortega. 
Taiwan said it is deeply saddened and pained by Nicaragua's decision and would evacuate all its diplomatic staff from the country. A defiant President Tsai in one stress that the island's pursuit of democracy and freedom will not be derailed. It's not the first time that Nicaragua has snubbed Taiwan. It switched recognition to Beijing under Ortega in 1985, before reversing course five years later. Beijing shot down accusations that it promised economic assistance in exchange for Managua's friendship. Foreign Minister Wang Yi in turn denounced Taiwan for championing dollar diplomacy at the expense of its citizens. The United States accused Ortega who is serving a disputed fifth term in office of dictating policies that do not represent his people. Taiwan is increasingly frustrated by a dwindling list of diplomatic allies, with eight countries ditching bilateral ties under Tsai's watch. The incoming president of Honduras is also set to part ways with Taipei, while the Solomon Islands' decision to do so sparked an outcry and unrest. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange is one step closer to being extradited to the United States to face espionage charges. The High Court in London ruled in favor of Washington, which appealed against a lower court decision not to extradite the whistleblower because of concerns over his mental health. The 50-year-old Australian is accused of leaking military secrets by releasing documents showing U.S. military misconduct in the Middle East. Assange has been in custody since 2019 after he was evicted from the Ecuadorian embassy, where he has sought refuge for seven years. And coming up after the break. China takes aim at the United States as President Joe Biden denounces autocracies. And in the NBA, the sisters and the Nuggets pay the price for playing on two straight nights.